the news this week, huge home builders showing big signals that there's some serious danger in the housing market coming this year. And you're noticing DR Horton uh, hit news, them, Pulte, everybody else missing their earnings. But what's worse is some of the signs that their inventory across the country is piling up. They have homes that aren't selling, traffic to their homes are at 10 year lows. And now we're seeing reports that they are blowing out and canceling subdivisions across the country, particularly they're canceling and renegotiating on people that they have deals with already. Kind of explain to you what that means and be careful if you own stocks because the stocks, and what Wall Street thinks is going on with the builders, doesn't line up. So we're gonna talk about that in a sec. I appreciate you watching this video. Real quick, hit that like button for me. You mean a ton to me if you would. And subscribe if you want more updates on the housing market at large across the US. Um, we dive in the news of the week. DR Horton, uh, I, you know all home builders, if you've been following my channel, have been riddled with uh, situations where their traffic is way down, their sentiment reports, their surveys are constantly off, and they're you know, struggling with so many different headwinds. Uh, I'll save you from the list. Uh, but with all that being said, um, DR Horton made news this week that said they are canceling and renegotiating a bunch of their subdivisions, meaning they go out and they purchase land. A lot of times these builders will buy land way in advance of when you see bulldozers moving on the property and framing going up and all that. So what the news reported on the uh, DR Horton's executives came out and said, hey, we're writing down almost $35 million in earnest money deposits and land carrying costs. And we're balancing on certain deals that don't meet specific criteria. And this tells you folks what the actual people putting sticks in the ground, making supply for this marketplace, they're doing the exact same thing they did last time. You know, in 2009, 10, 11, as the last housing market recession settled in, they just stopped building, you know? And then we had all this narrative for many, many years that followed about how short we are on supply and how, you know, there's, there's gonna be a huge bubble because there's just not enough demand. Well, there's not enough supply, rather, for all the people that wanna buy houses. Right now, you have the builders on these properties, and I'm telling you, if DR Horton is already canceling sales, they're canceling land deals, contracts of sale that they're doing, um, then you gotta understand, Pulte's doing it, Lennar's doing it, they're all running in the same position. Um, this week, and I'm a real estate agent in the greater Central Florida area, we're a huge section, okay? A lot of population in our area. Um, you've got, um, Daytona Beach, all the way uh, to Tampa side. So we got Tampa uh, and Orlando, two major marketplaces in our area. And the DR Horton team, just in the Orlando, sent out an update yesterday that just their greater Orlando area, they have over 700 inventory homes sitting, okay? Inventory means that these are plotted out, planned houses, probably had a buyer on them in the past that they're canceling the sale on, which is, crazy that's not a healthy sign for the marketplace um, the follow-up emails to that Lenar sends an email saying hey um, we'll pay realtors six percent commission on the buying side of the transaction okay let me explain that to you if you are com if you're familiar with com uh, regular commission on real estate traditional real estate is you put your house in the market you hire an agent, listing agent, you might pay them two and a half or three percent, and then you pay the buyer's agent two and a half or three percent for a total of five to six percent. And there's no such thing as a set commission, it's all negotiable. But what what I'm saying is Lenar is paying for one half of the transaction six percent, and that's a stimulus, folks. That's a price reduction because when they're throwing that kind of money to sell houses, they're making less money. They're just they want to, you know, incentivize the agent to bring the buyer. Um, and yes, the buyer pays a little bit more because Lennar is in, you know, instead of maybe reducing the price, they're giving the realtor some of the money. Um, but the reality is, the builders are actually seeing um, a major shift in how they're marketing these properties now. The other thing too, let me get back to this 34 million in write-off from DR Horton, okay? Follow this. When builders go buy land, um, most land is a lot of times seller financed. So um, you have what's called contracts of sale in real estate, which means that um, in land, the seller's like, hey, you know, I have this piece of property, you can put a bunch of money down and then I will carry the financing for you, okay? Very common in land because 
inland. Um, come on, Sinatra. It's my sidekick today. It's a poodle, is part cow. Um, but in contracts of, of sale, the seller's carrying back the financing. Basically, the person buying the property is only at risk um, because they're putting up their down payment. Uh, they risk their down payment capital. They risk whatever interest payments they've put in on the property while they're waiting to close. Because oftentimes what happens is contract of sale, the person's carrying the paper um, and the person that's put the money down, that's buying it, he lets them carry it for a period of time, like five years. And maybe they get some different type of financing later and then pay the guy off that originally on the property. What this saying is, and they specifically said earnest money deposits. So $35 million um, for earnest money deposits, some carrying costs, what they're writing off and walking from. So um, this could be, in my estimation, probably 300 to $500 million worth of assets that they're basically just gonna write off. Um, the other thing too is if you read through the lines, they are um, coming through and they're trying to renegotiate their contracts. So they're saying, hey, we got these new metrics that we're putting out there. And if they don't fit a certain cost structure, so we're buying your land for let's say $5 million, okay? Well, now the builder's like, we're not gonna be able to get these properties sold for what we wanted to. We're gonna build these houses on this land for $5 million. And now the land cost is gonna to take too much of our profit. Um, so as a result, we need to pay maybe 3.5 million for the land. So what you're also seeing is that it looks like they're doing that as well, is basically they're going through and saying, hey, um, you know, cost wise, this wasn't um, something that would work for us, so we're gonna lower it. So that's interesting. What that tells you, listen folks, what happens on a macro level is gonna happen on a micro level. So if builders, dang dog, my dog is literally wants to walk on the opposite side. Over here, over here. He literally won't even walk on my left side. What's wrong with you? Anyways, um, what, that, what I'm saying is you're gonna see land dropping, okay? Just whatever's happened with DR Horton is happening with Billy Bob, local builder, who also has to put a house on a property and build it with sticks and bricks and make a profit after he's done. That being said, you're gonna see land and land demand is gonna fall just like regular housing. Inventory is gonna climb there. Um, you know, so one of the things I've been kind of contemplating, even talking with my wife about talking to um, families and friends is the reality that um, if you are like ambitious kind of person, you got good money, good resources, you should have really good passive income before you try this, is you're gonna see an opportunity to really do well um, on a custom build, I think in the next two years, three years. So like if you've ever had um, your, you know, goal of setting up a really cool kind of new homestead type situation where, you know, the ultra wealthy love to do it, where they buy 10 acres, 20 acres, and then they put their whole family on it. You know, they cut out five acres for the son and another five acres for the daughter, and they plan it in the future. There's going to be a good opportunity for that because land's coming down and building materials are coming down. They're already dropping. Commodity prices are dropping. And the funny thing that a lot of this um, inflation changing, you know, we're seeing deflation. It doesn't come down uniformly. You know, you're seeing some of it drop in certain areas, but certain sectors aren't falling. And so Jerome Powell still sees the numbers high. He's going to keep hitting that rate. Um, and so you're going to see, I think, wood, you know, some of the metal, some of the paint cost some of that stuff that is required for building a house come down. So it'd be an opportunity to build, you know, a good custom house at a reasonable price um, if you can get the land for a song. And I think that's the opportunities that we're, we got coming for us. The other thing, listen to this. If you've got builder stocks, if you have a mutual fund with a bunch of builder, builder stock exposure, listen to this. The builder stocks are still up. 10 to 15 percent some cases more than 15 percent over the last six months how in the world does that make sense what has happened in the last six months prices of real estate has fallen okay so if that's the case how in the world are we having um situations where the builders are gaining ground on their stock price i mean how, how is the stock price positive right now 
think about that, folks. One of two things is happening with the stock price. And I just told you, the health of builders is bad news. They're going to see a bloodbath before they see profit. There's a cat coming this way. Like, I'm literally walking with with my dog, Cal, and this cat, this cat is like, hey, what's up, guys? Oh, man, this is going to be bad. Maybe it's good that I got my camera out. Cats doing what cats do. It disappeared. There's a blower down there. I'm going to turn around. So, anyway, what I was saying, listen to this. Builders builders are seeing their stock prices high which means one of two things you know because at the face of this you scratch your head and say that doesn't make any sense builders are getting killed in every way shape and form all the data ongoing the last fiscal quarter for all the builders almost every builder in the country had 20 to 30 percent buyers cancel on their deals they just bailed okay they just bailed out. Okay, so you have inventory skyrocketing. Buyers aren't coming to replace them. So the homes that canceled sale aren't seeing the next buyer step up and, and get in the deal. And now builders are literally writing down millions of dollars in losses. And you got to understand too, what is the carrying cost of 700 inventory homes just in Orlando? I mean, if you multiply that out across the country... There's got to be, just DR Horton alone, there's got to be 35,000 inventory homes with DR Horton. And I'm being generous. I mean, take 50 marketplaces, you know, multiply it times 700 homes. How many homes does DR Horton, are they sitting on? Plus Lennar, plus all these other guys, plus the local guys. So how in the world is the builder stocks up 15, 16, Lennar's up like, I think, 16, 17% um, over the uh, last six months when prices in the straight up front street level economy are dropping. And I'm telling you folks, that is either one of two things. Number one is that's either a bubble, a flat out bubble. Okay. On stocks that are builder, builder stocks. Or number two, the stock market is betting that 2023, there's going to be some massive fed pivot and you know, we're going to see things change, which that to me is bizarre too. Like, you know, folks came into my most recent videos and they were like commenting on, yeah, the Fed's going to pivot. The Fed's going to pivot. Well, Jerome Powell is not singing that tune. And I'm telling you folks, listen, some of the baseline indicators, I think like service cost in the, in, you know, if you just look at certain sectors of inflation, they're still like record highs. You know, we're still seven, almost 8% still. Um, inflation says seven, high 7% 7 range over a year ago for cost of living. And I'm telling you folks, like this isn't over. This isn't like, th there's a very good chance that you don't even see these ongoing trends. Like next time it drops even lower. I mean, there's no guarantees that, that what Jerome Powell is doing is making any difference. I mean, his you know, the interest rates are not positive above the rate of inflation. I mean, he's at 4% 4, 4 now. Um, you know, it's just, there's, there's a chance that this is not going to improve anytime soon and possibly some of the future updates. And I believe you're going to see some of these future updates getting worse. So on top of all that, the interest rate, a huge statement needs to be said is that the interest rates that we see are not purely based on anything the Fed does with the Fed rate, okay? So the mortgage rates that we see are a function of the market and the securities market, particularly mortgage-backed securities. The Fed has, I think, over $2 trillion of mortgage-backed securities that they're going to dump into the market over time already are doing it okay so you know regardless um and i don't believe the fed's going to have a handle on their their two percent target of inflation is not going to happen anytime soon so being that that is the case um 
they're going to keep hammering those interest rates for a while. Unless Jerome Powell has a lobotomy, this man wants these Starbucks workers and Chipotle workers to not be making anywhere near $16 an hour anymore. And he's going to push it because if we're going to bring down cost of services, the unemployment has to climb and wages has to drop. And um, that's just, we're just not on a path for that yet. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, the other news was Bloomberg came out and said, hey, um, consumers feel like it's, it's the worst time to buy a house in a generation. I love Bloomberg's articles. Their headlines, they're as good as Yahoo Finance. Um, they came out and said, hey, um, you know, we had this survey and four out of five people said it's, it's the worst time. It's not a good time to buy and it's the worst percentage at 80%. Um, in a generation, which I, I I just laugh because they make a headline out of that, and then you go and look at like what sentiment report was that? Like Fannie Mae's, you know, homebuyer sentiment report? No, it was some University of Michigan backwood research section that you've never heard of, never seen cited, or they've not been tracking it all year. It cracks me up. It's like I wonder if they even keep the thing up. And what's funny is they say in a generation, which means someone started this thing in like the 1970s. It, you know, it, la it makes me laugh. I think what happens is they're like sitting or, you know, some people from the University of Michigan and Bloomberg are sitting at a table and are like, hey, my grandpappy back in the 70s used to ask five people how they felt about home buy. And it would be like 30% would say that it, was, it wasn't good or it was good. So what they, what they came up with next they're like, when's the last time you did that? Oh, we haven't done it in 30 years. Oh, you should do it again. We'll make a report about it. And they go out in the street in Detroit or somewhere, and they're like, hey. They ask five people what they think about buying a house right now, and then they make the news story out of it. Because there's like, it's funny. It's just, it's so thin. There's nothing to it. <sighs> However, it, you know, the, the theme of the article is not lost on me, but it's reaching. It just cracks me up. Anyway, folks. Got some really interesting updates coming for you this week. Um, if you're watching the channel, I covered on the last video, plummeting markets. Markets that if you live near these markets, they are going to have price pain. And if you live near it, you're exposed to it, be very careful. If you're thinking of selling, check that video out on the West Coast markets. Um, this week ahead, I'm covering Central U.S. and I'm covering East Coast U.S. as well. So you're going to want to pay attention to that. Um, as always, appreciate you uh, watching this channel. Please, in the comments below, tell me what you think about the home builder stocks and home builders. Do you feel like um, buying a custom home in the next two years is a good idea or a bad idea? And what would your custom home look like? And in your dream scenario, where would you build it? I'd like to hear from you in the comments. As always, thanks again. Hit that like button. Subscribe for updates. We'll see you guys real soon.